record. Okay, good morning, everyone. Um, I would like you to have your textbook, please. Try to bring it next to you. And open it on page 106. Page 106. Are you still there? No. Yes. I'm sorry. No. I'm sorry. No. Okay. <laughs> Good for you. <laughs> Funny. Okay. We. I said to you, please go to page one hundred and six. Um, this is not my fault. That the the internet is unstable. It's not my problem. One hundred and what? And six. Okay. This one. Okay. okay, we have studied those words. Those were the main concept vocabulary of the toe poems. It's a, a cheer up, teased, and pipes. Remind me what is the meaning of each one of them. What is the meaning of cheer up? What is the meaning of cheer up? No? It means so we are right in the book? Yes, you are going to. Uh, write in the book. When the birds are singing or. Yes. A uh, chirp, it means when uh, the birds are singing? Tweet? Uh, yes, tweet. Uh, that's yes, right. It's like tweet. Tweet or twitter. Okay, what do you mean of tease? Annoy? Yes, annoy. Excellent. And what about pipes? Uh, pipes? Pipes, you remember the grandfather, uh, uh, sorry, the grandmother pipes in the middle of their speech. To speak suddenly, right? Interrupt? Yes, to speak suddenly, yes, speaking suddenly. But if we think about something in common between the three verbs, what would it be? What's in common? Hmm. What's in common between the three of them? Chirip, antism, pipes? Yes. Uh, miss, you took this in the school. I wasn't with you. Who is talking? Noor? Yes. Noor, it's a recorded session. You find it okay. in the recorded session. You don't have an excuse. Okay. Yes, thank you. Hey guys, what did, what did yeah, can't you just connect to the three of them is what what's, what are they describing? Hmm. The three of them describe ways of what of speaking, of talking, isn't it? Of talking or speaking. Uh, or or making sound. Of course, you are supposed to write this in your in your textbook. Okay. Got it. Type. Let's think about other words that um, uh, may give us the same the same idea, or other word that fit the same category, uh, word that. Um, um, uh, 
describe the way of talking or speaking. Hmm. Hello, Otebido. Hey, uh, guys, don't mute yourself and disappear. I need you to interact. Think about other words, other verbs that describe way of speaking or talking. Oh my God. Yes, I was writing. Okay, fine. Yes, you can write and uh, you can unmute yourself. You can write and talk together. Can you give me any example of a verb that can describe the um, uh, uh, ways of talking or speaking? Uh, a verb? What am I doing? Uh, uh, you are. Uh... Can, you hear, can you hear me? Can you hear me? What am I doing no. now? <laughs> what I'm doing now? Interact. You are with your. Interact. Huh? Yes? It's what? I don't know if your sound is, uh, you're making your sound low. Whisper, yes, this. whisper. This is a way of speaking, to talk slightly and very quietly. Another okay. one, another one hmm? on the opposite. If I'm not whispering, so I'm what I'm doing highly. Hmm? What I'm uh, doing? I would write this one. Yeah. Really? Really? You write yell or Scream or cheer. All those are verbs that describe the way of talking, and we have other more and more. We call them the speech verb, the speech verb. It uh, reflected the way of speaking. So in, instead of saying, uh, uh, of saying say or talk, we can say whisper, yell, yell scream, or cheer. It's according to the way you speak. Any question about this? Any question about this? Thank you. You're welcome. Let's move to another thing, the word study. The word study of our text or your lesson, lesson. It's about the multiple meaning words. What do we go multiple meaning word? Some meaning some words in English have a multiple meaning, more than a meaning. Sometimes the meaning of the word it dis it differs uh, f if it is a noun from being a verb. We have a studied one uh, yesterday. It's the word, do you remember it? Pipe. Pipes? Yeah, that's right. Excellent. Pipe. Pipe, we studied six meaning of it. If pipe as a noun, what does it mean? Pipe as a noun, what does it mean? A tube. A tube to transfer the water or liquid through it. Or, as a noun too, it's a musical instrument, like the flute. If it's a noun, pipe means to, to transfer a liquid thing through a tube. Or, as a verb also, it means to talk suddenly. In the, uh, by, uh, by interrupting someone. To talk pipes, to talk suddenly uh, as, it, as you are interrupting someone. This is one of the meaning, but we still have other more words that can give me a multiple meaning for one word. Let's see. I have it here. Yes, here it is. I just need to... Okay. A few of you are attending today. Why? Do you know, for example, the uh, the word? Sorry, one second. To hide, just to hide. Okay. The word pen. Of course, all of you know what the meaning of pen. It's the tool that you use to write with. Means right? we need to write this and copy book or something. It's a, you have to study it because you will find it in your homework, maybe on the exam. It's right now on you with you in the. Um, uh, my PowerPoint. You want to write it while we are discussing it? It's okay. Got it? Okay, okay. Miss, uh, before you go to the other page, uh, can you say to me, uh, I will take a screenshot. Okay, okay. 
but I will send it today. This PowerPoint, I will send it today, and I will post it in your LMS after the session. So no okay. need, no need to yes to, to waste your time. So let's back to okay. the uh, our word. We said pen is the thing that you ha hold it in your hand, right? Right. Do you know that pen had another meaning? Hmm. Do you know another meaning for the word pen? No. No, you don't. I will show you. Yes, it means a cage or stable. Do you know the cage or stable what they are? Where we put the uh, the domestic animal in them. Do you know where we put the cows and the the sheep, the goats, uh, all those domestic animals? We put them in a in a place called the cage or stable. Yes, we can. We, this place is called pen too. It's called pen. So pen has another meaning more than just uh, yes the tool. Both of them are noun. Both of them are noun. Let's go to another word. Play. You know what the meaning of play? Play is a verb. It means to engage in a reaction or a sport. Play a sport or to play a game, whatever. Type. Do you have another meaning for the word to play, whether it is a verb or a noun? Hmm? Do you know another meaning for the word to play? I have. Guys, are you here? Yes. Okay, uh, why, you. Wait, why are you not trying to think oh, with me? Yeah. Miss, because we don't know. You don't Miss, know? I know. Yes, tell me. Uh, play film. Uh, uh, yeah, play. Play yes, it, as a noun. It means a drama. That's right, a play. That the actors stay, uh, st stay on a stage and they act something. We call this a play. You don't know this word too? No, I know it, but okay. uh, it's but play. We are, but we are, spl we are sleeping. Play. But we are sleeping, yes. Yeah. Stay sleeping in our bed. No. Okay, let's go to the third one. Left. Left um, at the verb in the past of leave. To leave a place. To go away from it. Do you not know another meaning for the word left? Hmm? Uh. Don't tell me that you don't know. Please. Left. Right. Left. Right. Right. What the? Huh? The direction. If we use left as a noun, the direction. We have right or left. Right or left. Huh? Do you know this or not? Guys? Me, yes. Ah, yes, yes. Yes, we, yes. We are feeling shame that we didn't remember it. Let's go <laughs> yeah, to... Yeah, <laughs> something like that. <laughs> Let's go to stock. Do you know what is a stock? You remember this word? We studied in the, the first two lessons, I think. It means origin or root, right? Yeah. Origin or right. root. Do you know another right, meaning right. for the word stock? Yeah, it, it, it's supposed to be the new meaning in this one, origin. But the stock, we, all, of, all of us know the word stock. No, I have a stock of the thing. In my store. What do you mean of stock here? New. No, supplies. Uh, stock supplies. Uh, 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 I have still other, yes, the, uh, uh, more than one I have supplied in, in my store. Right? Yes, right. Right. Yeah. The last one, state. Do you know the state? The state like this one for, of America? Um, a government of a re region like um, uh, Washington. Washington, D.C. is a state. New York is a state. But what other meaning of the word state do you know? Whether it's a word, a verb, or a noun. Whisper, whisper. State. Do you remember yesterday we were speaking about Country, Elizabeth? Country, Hey, this is the meaning, not country. It's like a, a government, a small uh, place in the uh, uh, town or city. Uh, mm. Do you remember when we were speaking about Elizabeth yesterday and I told you she used her uh, uh, state of being uh, single to help her country? What do you mean of a state here? It means condition, her condition, her status. A state means condition or status. This is a noun. Another meaning for a state 
is to say. Maybe this is new. State means to say. Fine, so here we have other more words and you are going to receive in your homework today uh, um, other words that have more than a meaning. You are asked to read the sentence well and choose uh, what the, this word means in this context. The, the meaning you are going to, to, it differs according to the context itself that you are reading. Any question about the thing, this part? Thank you. You're welcome. And thank you for what or what or what. <laughs> okay. Uh, now let's go to... <laughs> thank you for making us shame. <laughs> This is, no, 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 you don't have to feel that, yes. you, are, you are great, by the way. Let's go to page 107 in your textbook. You remember when we spoke about... Which page? 107. Thanks. 107. Um, you remember when we uh, studied the difference uh, between the end to stop the line and the run on line? We said that yes. the, the end stop the line is a line that ends with one of the punctuation mark, whether it was a comma, uh, a follow stop, um, a semicolon, um, uh, any one of those uh, punctuation mark. While the run on are line that do, um, uh, do not end with any punctuation mark and they follow each other in the stanza. Fine. So uh, here in this in this book that you have at the table. I mean, let me show it to you. Okay. Can you hear this noise behind in the background? Yes. Really? Yes. Okay. Yes, this you have this box in front of you. He needs you first to summarize the action of each stanza in the morning talk. So, I can you please go to the uh, to the morning talk in your book? It you will find it on page one hundred and one. Page one hundred and one. Did you reach it? Yes. Yes. He needs you here to summarize the action of each stanza. It means that yes. Give me one sentence, as if we are writing a subheading for each one. Each stanza, one sentence to summarize it. Can you do this? We will not write in the answer in the box. We write it on the um, uh, on the same page with the above each stanza. I mean, you can just go to the the page, and then we write it together. Yes, you did. Mm -hmm. This one. Okay. One hundred and one, miss. Yes. Oh, okay, <clears throat> 101, yes, the first is standard. Um, if you remember it, can you try to give me one sentence like um, as if we were writing a subheading for it? Hmm. Miss, is, it, uh, is this is was a recorded session? No. The, no. the morning talk? Uh, the morning talk, yes, we have finished it, but now we are doing something different. We are analyzing it, discussing it. I, di I, di I didn't see it. Fine. Now, let's think about if you read the first stanza, you have to watch it, Noor. Sah? Right, Noor, with me? I will watch it after the school. Yes, please, Noor, you have to follow us. What do you I'm think? I, 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 I'm watching all of your sessions. Okay, thank you. You like me? Yes, you have to be my big fan. Okay. <laughs> like the page please and turn on the okay. uh, turn on the bell to get my notification <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay hi guys the people who attended the session where have you gone here yeah, okay yeah. Well, I'm, well okay i'm happy that you are here miss i don't understand what you do you have to ask me then tell them me i don't understand so i repeat it again for you again now we have a standard we need to find Summarize it in one sentence. What is happening in this stanza? Got it? As if we are writing a subheading. So in the first okay. stanza, yes, what's happening here? One sentence. 
Huh? What's He's that? describing robin. That's it. Excellent. Here it is. The poet described the robin. Can you see it? Yes. Yes. Can you write it, please, in your book quickly? And when you finish, move to the second stanza. You need to think about yes, what's happening in this stanza. Yeah, Thompson wrong here to be the scribes. Okay, let's go to second stanza. Hmm. What's happening here? Now, of course, you have the answer in front of you. Because I have done it with the other class before you. That's it. It's recorded here. But if you have another subheading, we can change it. In the second one, the poet accused the robin of not being the real one. He said to him, you are not the real robin. Because he was, it was the American thrush. So this is the, the second one. The poet accuses. The poet accuses the robin of not being the real one. Are you following? Yes, I am okay. with you. Where? I can see you. I'm following it without talking. <laughs> I, didn't, I don't need to talk. Yeah, come on. <laughs> Okay, let's go to the third, the third stanza. He fluffed up, I'm not just Coco, he cried. Yes, till the end of the stanza. How can we summarize it? Here, that was the first time for the robin to talk. So this is what the robin replied to the word indigenous. Because she told him in the, in the second verse, you are indigenous. You are native, you belong to a special place. Which is... It's oh, I miss. Ahmed, hello. You're joining too late. Sorry. Miss, I, miss I should write this word? Yes, of course. The You wrote you write it in the same place where I'm writing. Above each... Okay, can you go up? No, I can't because we are moving on. Just now go... I want to copy. You write into copy. I said write it. Okay. Is there anything else up to copy? Yes, two things. Can you show it to me, please? <sighs> okay. Thank you. Now you have the three of them. Okay. Let's go to the third stanza. Let us start with the, look who's talking. He chirped. Your people didn't come uh, from Europe. What did the uh, what did the um, uh, the robin doing here? He told her, "Look who's talking." That means that he was accused her of being indigenous too. So yes, you will write this. This is on the the third standard. The robin accused the the poet by being indigenous. Hassan, have you finished? Can I just enlarge the page? Uh, yes, I finished okay. the first two. Okay. So this one in the third in the third uh, the third stanza. The poet accuses the uh, the robin of not being. Uh, this is the, the second. This is the third. The robin replies to the word indigenous. This is the third. And the fourth one that we have just said. To, the robin accused the poet by being indigenous too. He told her, you are indigenous too. You, you do not belong to a lot of places. You belong to one place. You are a native. And the last one. I will not show you the answer. I will let you think. The last stanza. When he, he said indigenous, he teased her as he flew by. What is the best subheading we can add here? What do you think? The best subheading. The robin. Uh, huh? uh, yeah. Yeah. 
right? Yes, the Robin teased who? Uh, the pot. Yeah, excellent. That's it. By being indigenous. Okay. Oh, yes, I told. I wrote it only the Robin teasing the uh, the pot, and I wrote it mis by uh, incorrect. Okay. By being indigenous is wrong. No, no, no. You can add it. Excellent. Good job, Noor. Okay. The Robin teasing the pot. By calling her indigenous, as yes, as Noor said, it's correct too. Got it. So this is the answer of the fir the uh, the first question in the table that I ha was showing you on page one hundred and seven. But because we don't have the um, enough space, so we wrote it here in the uh, on the po the poem itself. Right. Stay on the same page, which is the poem I mean. And I want you to look at those stanza. Look at the stanza one, two, three, and five. One, two, three, and five. We have five stanza in this poem. Five stanza. I want you to look at the stanza one, two, three, and five. And tell me uh, what type of line breaks appear in those stanza. Did you get my question? What is it? Is it in the stop the line, or it's um, it's in the stop line, or it's um, a run on line? They are here. They are this one. Miss, can you say it again, please? Again, okay. It seems that he, they will shut it in our face. <laughs> I just want to m minimize it so you can see the um, you can see the whole poem together. Here it is. Almost this one, okay. Uh, we have here one, two, three, four, and five stanza. Look at the stanza one, stanza two, stanza three, and the stanza five only, okay? Don't look at four. And tell me what kind of line break, uh, the line in those four stanza, are they end stopped or they are run on? Hmm. Stand on me. End stopped? In the stopped? Miss, you, you are saying one, two, three, and five? One, two, three, and five only. If they are they in the stopped, it means that each line ends with one of the, punct the punctuation mark, or are they running? It means that uh, most of the lines uh, do not end with the with punctuation mark. Miss, it ends with It's in the stopped? In the stop, it means that all the lines end with the, most of them end with the uh, punctuation mark. Only the last sentence in each one. So the common, <laughs> what's common? Huh? The most of them. Run on most or of the... in the stop. Yes, I don't know. I, I... In uh, every last line, there is a full stop. Like, each each line end with a full stop because this is the end of the, of the whole stanza. I mean, with the line in the middle. The first, oh, the second, no. the third, the fourth, all this one. No, there is no. So this means that they are end stopped or run on? Run on. Yes, that's it. Let's get closer to them. Thank you, Noor. Noor and... Uh, uh, Noor. Noor, yes, I know. Noor... Uh, you wanna and we am, right? You are the only one who's working today well. Look at the first stanza, the first line, the second line, the third line, the fourth line. So the common line does not, the common line do not end with any punctuation mark, so they are run on. Yes, maybe it appears here in this one, but this one does not end. So the common or the most of them end, are run on, run on lines. Let's go to the second stanza. All of it. All the lines do not end with any punctuation mark, so they are run on. The third, the third stanza. Yes, the first, the second, the third, uh, the fifth, the, the sixth, the seventh. So uh, most of the lines do, do not end with the um, punctuation mark. Let's go to the last one, which is the fifth. Also, the line do, does not end with punctuation mark, so most of them are run on. So you can go to your your table on page one hundred and seven. Uh, 
the the part below below Morgan talk the second um, the second uh, uh, log you write that they are run on all those uh, stand are end with the run on uh, lines Tab, what about the force the four the stand the four this one what type of line break use here uh, to red clay on this great island yes look who's talking he chirped your people did not come from Europe or even India. The turtles say you are, yes, a relative to red clay on this great island. Yes, most of the lines here are run on or um, end stopped? Miss, end yes. stopped. End stopped. Yes, that's right, end stopped. What is the purpose? Well, where all the lines, most of the lines are run on, except the stand the four, most of the lines are end stopped. What did the, the, the poet want to do here? Do you remember? No. Yes, he no. wants here to slow down, slow down the pace of the poem itself, and he wants the, the reader to um, uh, concentrate, or the, he wanted to emphasize this part when he was telling, look who's talking, he chirped. He, uh, he is trying now to reveal to the, the poet that you are just like me. Don't make fun of me. You are just like me, you are indigenous. So it's like a twisted point here. So he wants us to slow down here in this point. That's why he put here a, a, uh, the punctuation mark. Uh, so we are making a lot of pauses while you are, we are reading it. Did you get the point? Yes, you get it. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go to this, the second the poem, which is the uh, immigrant, the immigrant picnic. The immigrant picnic. Uh, um, there's a question in the same box that on page 107. He said, which standards set the scene? The standards that set, is setting the scene. What's the meaning of setting the scene? Introducing for you the, uh, the, 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 day, the date, introduce, the time I mean, introduces for you the place, what's in this place, describing the thing in the place. In which standard is the, po the poet is describing the setting? Stanza one. One only? The second one also? Yes, excellent. It's uh, the first and the second one. In the first, he was describing, he said, what is the date? It's uh, the 4th of July. Uh, described the uh, the places, that uh, the flags painting the town. Also, the uh, he described the, um, the, the, the uh, uh, on the table, there are uh, plastic forks and knives. And then what he was doing, he was grilling. And what, what was he wearing? Wearing an apron. Uh, what he was cooking that he, he had potato salad and macaron on all these things and he was wearing this hat that looks like a state of pennsylvania if you just look for the, this state on the map you will find that it had the shape of the um, uh, of a hat the the uh, the, sh the shape hat okay um well let's go to our presentation again yeah this is the box here it is and the, all the answer, the, 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 the table that you'll find is on page 107. Let's move to another thing. Idioms. Have you studied this word before? Hmm? Have yes, you yes, yes. Yes, so Hassan? Think, Hassan? Uh, yes, can you tell us what is the meaning of idioms? It's like sentences that give a meaning that is not the literal meaning. Okay, like, uh, it's not like sentences, the, huh? It's a phrase, it's not sentence. A phrase, okay. Mm. Uh, it's like the sky is raining cats and dogs. Mm -hmm. That's right. Uh, cats and mm. dogs here in the... Uh, uh, raining cats and dogs, this is the, an idiom really. And what does it mean? It means that the sky is raining uh, heavily. Heavily, yes, excellent. It's not raining, of course, it's cats and dogs. Bodies of cats and dogs are falling on our heads, no. Cat, it's raining cats and dogs, it means that it's raining heavily. Someone else said, we, I know what is idiom? Someone else said, I know what, what is idiom? No, no one? Okay. Uh, uh, this is the really idiom, is one of the, it's a phrases um, um, made to give you, um, or like, um, it has, it's like a code. Uh, you cannot translate it literally. You have to memorize it well. And also, you cannot deduce or predict what it's meaning by analyzing the, uh, the, the words that it has. 
you will not reach or get the, the, the correct meaning. You have to memorize it as it is, and you cannot change any little word in it, in it even it if it was a, a preposition, uh, because this means that you aren't changing the meaning at all. Uh, um, so that's why, as Hassan said, you cannot, it, it cannot be taken literally, and we cannot uh, deduce it by analyzing them. Um, uh, they are very unique in each culture. I mean, each culture has its own idioms. And we have found those idioms in, in the American culture. Um, uh, this is most probably. Um, I have uh, brought for you some examples. And um, uh, of course, we suppose during our study, we are going to meet a lot and a lot of idioms. Let me show you first all of them. And then let you think about what does it mean, each one of them. Turn over a new leaf. Turn over a new leaf. This is an idiom. What do you think it means? To forget the past or open up a new page. Yeah, great. That's right. It means to begin a new or start over. Excellent. Okay, let's go to the next one. When pigs flies. When pigs flies. Like never. Like when something uh, that never happens, happens? Yeah, that's right. Something that's uh, um, highly, yeah, something highly unlikely, impossible to happen. Uh, a ship on your shoulder. I am lazy. No. And what about the, scripts? where are the, uh, the watcher? By the way, we may lose the connection because the, it's counting down. So you have to reconnect again. Okay. Huh? Quickly. Oops. It is yes we we were in um, a ship on your shoulder right so this is an idiot yes, yes the, what does it mean you think okay it means that uh, uh, you have a bad attitude or you are holding a grudge really it means that you are holding um, a great uh, uh, responsibility the last one, to sit on the fence. To sit on the fence. No one? Okay, it means to... For sure. To, to remain neutral or undecided. To remain neutral or undecided. Now, what about the idiom that we have met in our uh, poem? Do you remember them? When she said to her, her son, uh, he is on a ball and is supposed to tell him he is on a roll. Both of them are idioms, but both of them have totally different meaning. What do it mean to be, to say he is on a ball? On a ball it means that he is uh, knowledgeable or alert or one of the words that we have studied this in this unit. Perceptive. Excellent. I'm clapping with my hand for you. Yes, on the ball means to, to be knowledgeable or alert or perceptive. Uh, but it's supposed, she's supposed to say what he is on a roll. On a roll means that he is uh, experiencing or doing something successfully. Okay, fine. Um, Okay, uh, now let's move to uh, in your textbook, it, it, which is supposed to be in front of you, on page 108. I can open it here. Too. Uh, 106, 7, 8, here it is. 
Yes, this one. Here he is speaking about the uh, the idioms and uh, 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 some common English idioms. Here he give you in this box the, uh, the 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 idiom within the sentence and what does it mean. Uh, for example, grilling hot dogs and hamburgers is not rocket science. Is not rocket science. Rocket science here. This is an idiom. Uh, you cannot uh, translate it literally. But what does it mean in reality? The meaning of the idiom that uh, grilling is not uh, very difficult. It means that it's not very difficult. Uh, someone read the second one. Can I read? Yes, yeah, sure. Read your first. Go on. Yes. Yes, who? Page what? No. Page what? Page 108. Okay. First, they told him he wasn't born here. Then, to add insult to injury, they told him he wasn't really a Robin. Yeah. First, they, they told him he wasn't born here. Then, to add insult to injury. So, add insult to injury. See, this is, the, uh, this is an idiom. What does it mean? You, you know what the meaning of to insult someone? Insult, what does it mean? To say like uh, hurting things yeah, to them. Yeah, that's right. The uh, uh, bad word or bad things to someone. This is to insult him. And injury, it's like uh, uh, the, uh, the wounds or like the uh, cuts or um, a hurt. So add insult to an injury. Doing two bad things together. So the, what what does it mean? They made the situation worse. They made the situation worse. Someone read the third example. Can I read it? Sure, read. Go on. When it comes to understanding what indigenous meaning means, uh, they completely missed the boat. Yes, missed the boat. It means that they have a boat and they have to catch it? Uh, maybe. No, no. It has a totally different meaning. This, this idiom means that they fail to understand. When it comes to understanding what indigenous means, they completely failed to understand it. They completely missed the boat. So when you, when in, in the class, if I if feel that you do not understand what I'm saying, so I will say what, did you miss the boat? That means yeah. that, did you, yes, they, they fa did you fail to understand me or not? Fine, is the idiom now clear for you? There yes. is, by the way, uh, there is um, a special dictionary for idioms only where you'll find all, you, if you search the internet, you'll find it. You'll find all the idioms with their meaning. As if you are dealing with, the, with a word, the idiom, you, you are dealing with the, uh, uh, a structure of word. Type. Let's go the, um, to the, the table. Uh, we are still on page 108. Here, he needs you to do what? To, to, this is an idiom. And he needs you to hear to, to write is the, the, the correction of if the, the idiom is wrong. And here to, to write the, uh, what does it mean in the formal language. Did you get what I want to say? Yes. Right. Let's t look at the first one. Uh, look who's talking. Look who's talking. Um, at the, uh, this is an idiom. Uh, if there is a correction needed to this idiom. It's correct, by the way. I right. maybe you you will not. It's correct. Tab, what do you think? What is the meaning of it? Like you're not the one to talk. You're different. Or uh, look who's talking. He here. He is telling her uh, that you have the same problem, like me. That you uh, that you are indigenous, like me exactly. Fine. Miss, uh, I think the session end. Uh, no, no, I, as long as you are still in, so it's, it's going on. And it means what? The end of the, uh, the session? No, it ends the 10.50. We still have a lot of time. Mm. Right? What? Okay. Hmm? Because, the, because the fight was uh, at 9 and it finished 9 and a half. No, 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 it's the, it's so... the end of 10.50 in my schedule. If you okay. are bored, you feel bored and you want to leave, 
Oh, no, no. I, I'm just asking. Lala, don't worry. It's still going. Um, so here, this this idiot, look, look who's talking. It means, yes, it is you, you have the same problem like me. So why are you talking then? Um, we will not waste our time by writing right now, but I will show you the table. You will find it on the, uh, on the PowerPoint too. The answer, all the answers are written in it. Let's go to the second one. The flags are painting the town. The flags are painting the town. Uh, this is from the immigrant picnic. Is this uh, AGM correct or not? I, I know that it will be a little bit confused, a little bit hard for you to, to know if this idiom is correct or not. But actually, this idiom is, um, um, uh, is the, we say it, it's missing something. You should say the flags are painting the town red. It's missing the word red only. And uh, uh, your part is to tell me what the, uh, the meaning in formal language. When he, when the the poem said the the poem the, the poet said that the flags are painting the town red, so what does this mean? It means mean? that there was hmm. so many flags. Um, okay, something else. Putting the flags, putting the flags in any place, uh, especially in in, a, in in celebration, so it turned the it makes the the place or the day what. Festa, it's like a festival. So Means I will need to write. You I will show you the the writing. You will find it in the power, in the PowerPoint. Uh, that uh, I will show it to you right now. But let's discuss it first before I go to the to the presentation. Type like a chicken with us um, with its head loose. Is something wrong in this one? You should know this. It's What's a metaphor. No, what is wrong here in this uh, in this? Uh, uh, what's wrong here in the in this um, idiom? Mm. What is wrong? We said it, by the way, in the session. The mother said that like a chicken with its head loose, and the, her son answered her, "Not loose, it's oh, cut yes. off. Cut off. It's supposed to be cut off. So, what do you think? What what would be the meaning of this idiom?" Miss, yeah. When they kill the chicken and and take no, uh, no, this is not what the meaning. In the where they were celebrating, the mother found her son running there, over there, everywhere. So she told him, "What you are running like a chicken with its head loose? Do you know the head when the chicken when they cut its head? What happened to the chicken? It start to move in a haphazard direction." Because it, she, the, the chicken cannot see anymore. So she is comparing her son to a chicken with a cut off head. But when she said it, she said it, the, the idiom, she said it uh, uh, incorrectly. She said with head, uh, head loose, but it shouldn't be with head, so it should be with head cut off. So what the meaning of this idiom do you think? Huh? I have said it. You, when you say to someone, you, you are like a chicken with its head like, cut, cut yes. off? Huh? Yes. Yes. Hmm? yes. Like a chicken without a, a head or not Yes, with the meaning. Uh, what, when can I describe this? When can I say this idiom to someone? When, when he's doing Mi what? Miss, I know. Yes, tell me. Uh, it's mean that uh, the mother tell her son... Uh, mm -hmm. um, uh, he uh, he run yeah with without uh, his mind like the chicken excellent without clear direction you you tell someone when you find someone is just running from here to there or from there to here without uh, without clear direction haphazardly I mean so you can tell him that you are running like a chicken with its head cut off get it huh. Got it? Yes. Uh, yeah. Nice. Okay. Did, are you, did you miss the boat? <laughs> did you miss the boat? You shouldn't miss the boat. You should say, no, we didn't, because you have understood. If you didn't understand, you tell me, you'd have to tell me, yes, we missed the boat. Hmm? I didn't miss. <laughs> Excellent. Good job. Okay. 
the last one, he is on a ball. Is this a, a correct or a um, there's a mistake here? Miss correct. Oh come on. Her son corrected for her. She told him he is on. Hmm. Instead of on a ball, she told him what you are in. On a roll. Miss, you are writing A C E G. What is this? Did you forget roll on a roll instead of instead of uh, uh, on a ball on a roll? Didn't we say who said on a on a uh, on a ball is correct? You wanna? You wanna? Who was speaking? Uh, not me. Not you. Uh, me, Adam. 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 Uh, uh, who said yes? It's correct. Me, Adam. Adam. Okay, no, Adam. It's not correct because when you said he is on a ball, it means that he is alert. He is perceptive. But the mother should say he is on a roll. On a roll, it means that uh, he is um, um, like um, having a series of successful things. He is doing a lot of successful things. Okay, let me now show you the... Um, uh, Noor, you were asking a question. Here it is. This, this, this is it. This is the idiom that is there in your book. And this is the two uh, column you should write in your textbook. Those two. Write it now? Uh, no, no, not now. Let's uh, move to another uh, thing, and then you can write it. I took a screen. I took a screenshot. I will. Okay, fine. I will. I will post it directly after recording the session. Okay. Right. One more thing to study. Something called sound devices. What are the sound devices? We use them to create like a sound in our writing. Uh, we have two of them in our poem here. Uh, alliteration. Have you um, studied the word alliteration before? Right. What is alliteration? Ooh. Alliteration when you uh, uh, the repetition of initial co the consonant sound. You know the consonant letter, of course, right? We we have vowel v five vowels, and the rest of the the letters are consonant. So the consonant like L here. Look at those uh, words. Lately, Lucy was lazy. What did you notice? That the line have three words and the three of them start with the L, the same consonant sound. This repetition of the, uh, or of the, the same consonant sound at the beginning of each word, we call it alliteration. Alliteration is the repetition of initial consonant sound, that each word start with the same consonant sound. Like when you say wala, was walking in the uh, water. <laughs> Have you noted this? Again, wala no. was walking on the water. So I have here four words, and each one of them start with the same or, uh, consonant sound, wa, which is wala was walking on the water. Noor narrates a new uh, novel. Noor narrates a new novel. All the words initiate or start with what? With the same consonant sound, which is N. Got it? Got what, what do you call this yeah. sound device? It creates a, con a, a kind of sound. What do you call this? We call it alliteration. Right. What is the other thing? The, the um, as um, assonance. The, uh, the assonance is the repetition of the vowel sound, not the consonant. The vowel sound, like this one. The sweet and easy taste of cheesecake. The vowel sound, remember, vowel sound. Where is the repeated vowel sound here? Where I find it? Where I find it? Sweet, easy, cheese. The same vowel sound. The repetition of those vowel sound is called assonance. The assonance and the repetition of the... Also, this is one of the, the devices that creates sound in your poem. Or even in your writing. You can use it in your writing too, in writing any text. Okay. Nothing left for us. Uh, only last two things. The, something called the word play. How to play with word. Uh, the first one is called bun. 
and here the bun you are playing with the uh, we have two words and both of them are have different meaning but they are have the same the same uh, sound we call this bun like here you yes you butter back off bell butter butter is something that we put on our on our food right but it's supposed to be what better it's supposed to be better he is the the writer is playing with the word and instead of saying better he said butter both of them almost have the same sound but uh, but they have the totally different meaning this is a play of uh, of words and at the same time it's like a joke making fun we call this what we call it bun jokes that play on differences in the meaning of the words also here you have a stall you have a stall in a pizza in my heart look at this word pizza what he he's supposed to be what a hmm? piece yes a piece of a piece of he said it a pizza a pizza my heart what did this this is bun he is using again using or playing with the word that uh, have the same sound but different meaning this one too who are you i am a sandwich a sandwich got it what do we call this this is bun playing with words playing with words okay the uh, the you use this uh, to create a kind of fun in the um, in your writing uh, another type is called the um, malapropism the malapropism this is what we have studied in the uh, uh, in our poem when the the father and mother and the uncle was playing with the word it's also playing with word but here you are um, the word have the similar pron uh, pronunciation okay but the, the uh, it's uh, totally wrong uh, like let's go to the this uh, image here uh, what she's saying she is the the pineapple of uh, politeness she is a pineapple of politeness she doesn't mean pineapple it means she needs pinnacle pinnacle meaning at the top the top of politeness this one too oh he will dissolve he will dissolve my mystery it shouldn't be dissolve it should be resolve get it so the the word have the same almost close sound but um, uh, but they are totally uh, uh, different in meaning this is called the malapropism um, yeah exactly exactly uh, in the last in the yesterday yesterday recorded session I talked about characterization that uh, uh, the author he has two ways to describe the character the indirect ca description is to write his traits he is beautiful he is tall he is uh, spooky he is noisy all the thing the other way is is indirect through what through uh, the uh, the actions through the behavior through the the dialogue or the words that he's saying and when you read you can imply or you can deduce or you can predict the character traits the, those are two ways of describing characters from the two the two poems that we have wrote uh, the first one the morning talk uh, would the the author uh, making a direct characterization or indirect characterization <laughs> hmm? quickly in this the uh, when the poet was talking about the robin this was a direct characterization or indirect characterization the other guy is direct uh, characterization yes excellent direct because she was describing the robin every little thing in it yes so let's go to the ne the next one which is the immigrant picnic the family member with the author or the poet was describing the, each one of the family with indirect characterization or direct Indirect. Indirect. Excellent. Because we, from their 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 movement, dancing, laughing, nodding their head, saying funny comments, saying words, and using the bun and all these things, we deduce that they are what um, a family that likes to laugh, and they, uh, although they are different, but they accept each other and all these things. So he, I, I implies or I guess the, their traits from the the words that he said about them. Uh, thank you very much. Really. I hope that you have enjoyed the session, like just like me, um, and see you next Sunday, inshallah, in our quiz. Okay.
I have to run because I have a session in the other class. Enjoy your day and your weekend, but not too much. <laughs> bye bye. Uh, wait, 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 wait. Yes, 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 yes. I need to take a photo for your the attendant. You think that's I think, it? Uh, yes, some I, people... I have to pay. I have to pay for this that you have attending. I have to pay to you. Uh, I pay to pay to you grades, of course, not money. Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay, go. Enjoy your day. Bye-bye. Goodbye. Bye. Bye.